Welcome to episode 361, Dan Loeb, Activist Value Hedge Fund Manager. This is an outline of episode 361. There are two reasons why we study Dan Loeb. First, at age 56, Dan Loeb is no doubt the up-and-coming hedge fund superstar. Second, his hedge fund third point returns an average that is twice that of the S&P 500 for 20 years. Let us meet Dan Loeb. I think it's very important as, an, as a human being, but I'm going to use being an investor as sort of a prism because I think in order to be a really good investor, you need to be a little bit of a philosopher. There's a zillion people out there that, are, that have gone to Wharton or other top schools. They've studied accounting and finance. They can do valuations, DCFs. But you know, I think you have to be a little bit of a philosopher to be a good investor. I also want to talk about an approach to investing and running the business that I think has been really important for me. Um, and, and, it's, and it didn't come natural. Dan Loeb was born to Jewish family in Santa Monica, California in 1961. This is a map of Santa Monica. His father is a lawyer. In high school, he started a skateboard company. Here's a picture of Dan Loeb in high school. He spent two years at UC Berkeley before transferring to Columbia University in New York City. In 1983, he graduated with a Bachelor in Economics from Columbia University. He was 22. Here's some interesting thing he did at Columbia University. In his senior year, he lost $120,000 betting on the stock of Puritan Bennett. I look up the stock. Puritan Bennett manufactures medical ventilators. After graduation in 1983, Dan spent 10 years working in Wall Street, from private equity to distressed financing. His last job was as vice president of Citigroup in charge of high-yielding bond. In 1995, at the age of 34, he founded his own hedge fund, Third Point, with $3.4 million borrowed from his family and friends. Third Point is one of the most successful hedge fund in Wall Street from 1995 to 2018. It averages 19% return a year, double that of the S&P 500. By late 2018, Third Point has $18 billion asset under management. How did he do it? He often buys into trouble of poor performing companies and acting out as activists on the board to pressure reform. In other words, he turns the company around. These are his three most famous cases. In 2013, he attacked William Rupert, CEO of Sorabi, who spent 37 years working at Sorabi. William Rupert was ousted. Uh, as well, but this morning, a 13-D has just been filed with the SEC in which um, Third Point indicates it has now become the largest single shareholder in Sotheby's at 9.3 percent, a significant increase in its holdings. Uh, Third Point, in a letter that was sent uh, on October 2nd uh, to uh, William Ruprecht, the chairman and president and CEO of the company, uh, indicates that it's concerned with Sotheby's leadership and shareholder misalignment. It's concerned with the company's strategic direction, its board governance, uh, and uh, goes on to have, it's a good, it's a good Dan Loeb letter actually. Our, our research suggests Sotheby's crisis of leadership has created dysfunctional divisions and a fractured culture. There is a demoralizing recognition among employees that Sotheby's is not at the cutting edge, demonstrated by the company's inability to even develop a coherent plan for an inter internet sales strategy, must less uh, much less implement one, did have an opportunity. And then they'll battle with Sony in 2013. Colin joins us from the deals desk. Sammy. It is the deals desk, I think, now, right? Money beat. Accurate. Thank you for being here, sir. <laughs> so let's, um, let's see what George Clooney said, because it's kind of, here it is. Sure. How, how any hedge fund guy can call for, on, for responsibility in the movie industry is beyond me. There is no conscience at work. A guy from the hedge fund entity is the single least qualified person to be making these kind of judgments. He's, a, he's dangerous to our industry. That's what George Clooney says when he's talking about Dan Loeb. And Dan Loeb, of course, wanting to shake up Sony, which has become, shall we say, um, sluggish. Large and yes. Slow. Large and sluggish. Right. Large, and, large and slow. Dan Loeb has shot back and says, 
it's this. He says, notwithstanding the fact that the media likes to get a stir, I admire Mr. Clooney's passion for Sony and his loyalty to Sony and his friends there. He, he said, look, I don't think George Clooney really understands that Sony's a public company and right. public companies have to address their shareholders. And, and you know, I'm, I'm an investor, therefore I have the right to say, right. stop up your game. Right. And I think, I think Dan Loeb is, is still definitely going to say, I have the right to say what I've said. And I think what he was getting at uh, in this interview with Variety where he responds is that essentially Sony's still got some work in progress but he can't really part of this too is is the japanese business culture right we, we've talked about this where it's difficult for an activist from the outside particularly from america probably to go in and shake up a huge japanese company it's well, just not and, and also there's a lot of consensus building goes on within japanese companies right, right? Exactly. it's not a conflict it's not the western model of creative destruction where we come in and say well okay this is this isn't working we'll just wreck it exactly. all and fire everybody that doesn't happen exactly and, and then low battle with Kempo Soup in 2018. Welcome back to Squawk Box. Uh, time now for the Executive Edge. Dan Loeb's third point uh, revealing that it re reportedly now has built a stake of more than $300 million in Campbell's Soup. That's roughly 2.5% of the company. Source is telling us that uh, third point filed for antitrust clearance, which is necessary if it wants to increase its stake. And, get involved in business decisions themselves. A 30-day waiting period ended earlier this week. It's unclear what Loeb's plans are for the stake, but uh, he has reportedly spoken with Campbell's interim CEO, Keith McLaughlin, uh, about a possible course of action. Campbell's Soup is out of, at a crossroads in its 150-year history as its canned soup and other processed foods have fallen out of favor with consumers. Former CEO uh, Denise Morrison stepped down. And now about his personal life. He's a sports fanatic a very accomplished server to a very high level of difficulty. He also once challenged the Navy SEAL to a triathlon. Now speaking of a tough guy, what have I learned today? Three things. First, Dan Loeb is young and aggressive activist, and he used a bottom-up value approach. Second, he often buys into trouble and poor performing companies and pressure them to reform. Third, his three most famous cases of corporate reform are Sotheby, Sony, and Campbell Soup. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. My next video will be 10 Lok, 10 Trading Lessons. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.